Mo3 and Trap Boy Freddy came up in the Dallas rap scene together and were homies back in the day. But Street Beef split them apart and led to shootouts, beatdowns, and murder in broad daylight. Before he hopped in the booth, Trap Boy Freddy had a crazy come up in Dallas. He was always getting in trouble and kicked out of school as a kid. But what he did at 14 was wild. According to rumors, Freddy wasn't happy with his Christmas gifts that year, so he decided to jump in the trenches and start hustling for his own bread. He got his own apartment at 14 with his homie and went hard in the streets. Back then, he was running with an infamous crew called DF Dub. DF Dub was putting heavy pressure on everyone else back in the day, and some OGs taught Freddy how to move. But after dudes started getting killed and locked up, Freddy realized he didn't want to be clicked up like that anymore and started his own crew. Hustling paid off for a minute, but then things started catching up to him. Freddy got booked for the first time at 17, and at one point, he was wilding out so much that he got arrested 12 times in 6 months. He kept dodging the charges, so Freddy wasn't even thinking about switching up how he moved, but eventually he had to sit down for 5 months, and that's when Freddy decided to hop in the booth and start laying down tracks. Freddy's first projects came out in 2014, but he didn't really start going hard until 2017, and by the time he decided to rap full time, Mo3 was already coming up in Dallas. Mo3 had a crazy life in the city too. He grew up seeing violence and poverty every day, and a lot of nights he would have to sleep outside when the electricity at his mom's crib got shut off. Freddy's story about getting his own place at 14 just so he could hustle in the streets is crazy, but Mo3 got active at an even earlier age. Mo3 stole a gun from his cousin when he was 12 and carried it everywhere he went even though he didn't have any ammo for it. Then at 14, he got hit with his first robbery charge and went through damn near every correctional facility in Dallas over the next few years. According to Mo3, he was 15 when he started getting into shootouts, and he claimed he got in so many that he lost count. But besides busting at the ops, Mo3 was out there robbing people too, and at age 17, he got hit with four charges of aggravated robbery. Mo3 had put himself in a bad situation, but his case hurt his family too. His mama spent everything she had trying to fight the charges for him, and she ended up losing her house, car, and had to move in with her sister. After Mo3 got hit with a 10-year sentence, his pops asked him what the next move was after he got out. Mo told him he had no idea, because it wasn't like he had a lot of options, and that's when his dad told him to start rapping about the streets instead of living in them. He had already been rapping and singing his whole life, so when he got out after serving two years, Mo3 got to use his cousin's recording studio for free and started going hard in the booth. He dropped his first project in 2014 and picked up a lot of buzz off the rip, and after grinding in the game for a couple of years, he signed a deal with Epic Records. He also linked up with Trap Boy Freddy for the track Landlord before either one of them blew up, but it didn't take long for everything to start falling apart. If Mo3 had left Dallas behind right then, he'd probably still be alive today and taking over the game. But instead, he stayed in his hometown and the drama started catching up to him. According to rumors, Mo had issues with another rapper named Go Yeo for years, but it's not clear where it all started. In 2017, they allegedly ran into each other at a club though, and at some point, shots started going off and Mo3 got booked for hitting two people. The charges didn't stick, but Mo still got dropped from Epic Records over the situation. So instead of having a label to back him up and help guide him through the industry, Mo had to handle everything by himself. His name was already buzzing in Dallas, and it seemed like Mo3 was about to make it out on his own, but that's when old friends became enemies. Trap Boy Freddy linked up with Go Yayo and another Dallas rapper named Yellow Beezy for the track Pick 6, but left Mo3 off it. Mo said he was never worried about the track, but that's when the beef allegedly sparked between him and Freddy. What made the situation even more complicated was when Mo's homie, Roy Lee, started beefing with Yellow Beezy. Roy Lee was just a comedian, but he put hella pressure on Yellow Beezy all over social media. He was always calling him out for the fade. Then in 2018, someone shot Lee in the leg, and he tragically died a couple of weeks later. Nobody on the outside knows who killed Roy Lee, but a lot of people don't think it's a coincidence that Yellow Beezy got hit up just a few days later. Yellow was shot three times in a drive-by, and Mo3 allegedly dissed him over it on the track Word Around Town with the line, Word Around Town that somebody got found. Thumped over in the car, body stretched out on the ground. And on the track 219, he sent more shots with, In the city they talking, they know what I did. I hit up that rapper, you made him famous. Yeah, he barely made it, but will not again. Then in 2019, Mo3's homie Bubba was killed outside a grocery store in Dallas after two shooters rolled up on him and started letting off shots. It's not clear who was behind the hit, but from that point on, the violence never stopped. Freddy and Yella Beezy both allegedly ran down on Mo3's manager, Brian Rainwater, and put hands on him. Rainwater's just a music dude who doesn't have any street ties, but Freddy allegedly caught him one time, then Yella and his crew allegedly stomped him out in the middle of the street. Freddy and Mo3 were going back and forth all over social media, and then Freddy leaked a video that allegedly showed Mo3 running away from him. It's tough to see what actually happens in the video, but Mo3 said Freddy was capping about what went down. According to Mo3, 
He pulled up to Freddy's shop in his own hood to run the one-on-one -on -one fade, but Freddy wouldn't come out. He said everyone scattered when the cops pulled up. Then he hopped on IG Live and told Freddy to pop out and meet him in a fight. Another video came out that shows Mo pulling up to Freddy's place before that too. Mo said he walked up with no gun on him and just wanted to throw hands with Freddy. Then Freddy pulls out a huge rifle, but Mo still walks away with no issues. What's wild about the whole situation is that Mo 3 could have dipped out at any time and left the Dallas drama behind. He was running up huge numbers and collabing with dudes like Boosie Badass and could have moved away to focus on his career, but instead he stuck around and allegedly got into a shootout with Freddy and his crew. In September 2020, Mo 3 pulled up to a nightclub called V Live and shots started going off before he even got inside. He allegedly shot back and hit two ops. And according to rumors, Trap Boy Freddy was one of them. A couple of weeks later, Freddy told his fans that he broke his leg in a car wreck. But Mo3 aired him out on IG and said that he actually got shot at V-Live. Is my op laid up in a hospital talking about he got in a car wreck? Boy, they talking about you broke your leg. Tell these niggas you really got hit up. Then Freddy clapped back and dissed Mo for putting street business on the internet. At that point, it was only a matter of time before one of them either got killed or locked up. And just two months later, the war in Dallas ended with a brutal shooting in the middle of the highway. In November 2020, Mo 3 allegedly spotted someone following him, so he got on the I-35 to get away. The move didn't work though, and the other whips stayed right on him. And instead of keeping the chase up, Mo 3 decided to shoot it out. He pulled over and ran to the passenger side of the car to grab his blower, but he wasn't fast enough and the shooter ran up on him before he could get it. Mo 3 ran off on foot down the highway, but the shooter popped him eight times and he collapsed right there. People immediately started linking Freddy and Yellow Beezy to the murder, but it actually turns out they might not have been involved. Brian Rainwater says Mo3 was killed by a jealous dude because Mo was sleeping with his baby mama. Mo3 never died over no rap shit. Um, he died over a jealous baby daddy. But nobody knows the full story right now. Freddy might not have put the bag on his head, but that ain't stopping him from dissing Mo3 right after his death. He dropped the track Laugh Now and said, tell him Laugh Now, heard they jump out the whip. He got ran down, why you ain't tell him before the beat? You was fanned out, everybody was instigating, look how it panned out. Heard when they caught him, they caught him with his pants down. Freddy might have survived the war with Mo3, but now he's facing decades in prison on a weapons charge he picked up last year. The cops also found a live tiger inside his house, which is illegal in Texas, but it's not clear if Freddy will face charges for that yet. Freddy and Mo3 could have put on for the city together and started a new wave of Southern rap. But instead, they let street beef tear Dallas apart, and now Mo3 is dead, and Freddy might be facing decades if he goes down for this new case. Rest in peace to Mo3 and everyone else who lost their lives.